unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Wow. Champion Josh Taylor admits, finally admits that Teofimo Lopez is not undisputed. Says he has to fight Devin Haney first. We're going to talk about that in this here video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Before I get started, this weekend, Usman, Jorge Mavidal, UFC 261. If you are going to be ordering the fight, use my link, ESPN Plus Pay-Per-View. Should be a good fight. I will definitely be tapped in. I watched the first fight. A little bit disappointing, but I think the second one will be better since both fighters have had equal opportunity to train, so there can be no excuses. UFC 261. Use my link or my link tree to ESPN Plus to order that fight if you will be ordering it. And that does help the channel continue to grow and put out dope content like this. Also, smash the like button and subscribe. Now, link in the description. Champion Josh Taylor, you got a big fight with Jose Ramirez coming up May 22nd, Las Vegas for the IBF, WBC, WBO, WBA, Junior Welterweight Titles, a.k.a. Undisputed. Now, ironically enough, Josh Taylor, who's fighting for Undisputed, as I just mentioned, May 22nd on ESPN, he commented on Teofimo, who's claiming to be Undisputed in the division just under his at 135 at lightweight. Josh Taylor disputes this. He doesn't believe that Teofimo can aptly call himself Undisputed without seeing Devin Haney. Let me get into what Josh Taylor had to say in a recent interview again link in the description Tio Fimo he's saying he's undisputed champion and he's not he's still got the other belt to win he's got to beat Devin Haney to win the other belt so he's got unfinished business at lightweight to do do I think he's a very good fighter absolutely I think he's an outstanding fighter I think he's a great fighter did he do well to beat Lomachenko absolutely I thought he did brilliant but he did brilliant against a small lightweight. Teofimo, he's a massive lightweight, and Lomachenko, a very small lightweight. But again, he's got unfinished business to do, so I'm not even thinking about him. I think he's a good fighter, very well-rounded, good timing, good power, but I'm not interested in him at the minute. Now, I agree with a lot of what Josh Taylor is saying with this one caveat. Um, in my opinion, there's too many people giving Vasil Lomachenko a pass for his performance in the Lopez fight. For starters, Lopez absolutely beat him. See, this this is the problem that I have with boxing. And it's really not even boxing, it's boxing media. Boxing media will build you up and build you up and build you up again, and they'll tell you that Lomachenko, he could do no wrong. Vasily Lomachenko, he walks on water. He could turn water to wine, etc. They say he's the next Muhammad Ali or better than Muhammad Ali. They'll tell you Lomachenko could beat. I remember a reporter, Dan Raphael, said that the Lomachenko that beat whoever he, he had fought at that time uh, could arguably make life real difficult and beat pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. He said, basically, the Lomachenko we seen tonight would give Floyd Mayweather maximum fits and arguably beat him, you know? So if we're going to give a guy this praise and say he could beat a guy who went all the way to welterweight, went up to 154, beat more champions in history, TBE, Floyd, Ma easy work. I ain't got to worry about it, right? That could beat, he could beat Mayweather, but then now we're saying he's he's too small at lightweight. That just doesn't make sense to me because Floyd 
is not the biggest guy and he went all the way to 54 and is beating the likes of Oscar De La Hoya, a gold medalist, Miguel Cotto, a Hall of Famer, and Canelo, a future Hall of Famer at 152. And Canelo had like a 10-year youth advantage on his side and he was supposed to be the stronger of the two fighters, etc. So how are we going to give Lomachenko this pass where he looks like he does, doesn't throw any punches, and people keep using this like, oh, Loma's shoulder was bothering him. He's a two-time gold medalist with 400 amateur fights. So, you know, you got to figure it out. You don't think Floyd Mayweather or other greats have had broken hands, fractured hands. Deontay Wilder knocked out Chris Ariola, who's about to fight former champion Andy Ruiz coming up May 1st. And he fought him with a broken hand, a fractured hand, and a torn bicep. And he still got a knockout in that fight right so i don't agree with josh taylor and the boxing fans who keep finding ways like oh like george cambosos recently said that wasn't the fool lomachenko his shoulder was hurt well then he shouldn't have been competing if your shoulder is that bad to the point where you're going to make these type of excuses then you got to postpone the fight you know who cares about anything else this is your legacy this is your belts this is your integrity your reputation, your resume, your record, everything's on the line. So if you can't make it, you can't make it until you're healed or you get the surgery or whatever. You know, you got to just disappoint people. I'd rather listen. My my thoughts is this. I'd rather disappoint people than to disappoint myself because you could you don't have like yourself. You have to live with other people. You don't. You know what I'm saying? I live by myself. So, you know, I'd rather disappoint other people and they don't understand why I made the move or the decision I did than to disappoint myself. And I got to live the rest of my life with this notion that, you know, I I did this wrong or should have did this different. So Lomachenko should have pulled out the fight. I'm not accepting anything else other than that. So Josh Taylor saying he's small. The last thing I'll say before I move on to more of the topic of the video in the title is this smash the like button. He's saying Lomachenko is a small lightweight, but a lot of y'all don't know Lomachenko fought above 131 pounds in the amateurs. He was in the World of Boxing series with no headgear, which is basically like almost like a pro fighter, and he was fighting in the 130s. So they keep saying how small he is. No, he actually, this is what top rank does often. They'll have Shakur Stevenson or Lomachenko, and they'll start them off in a division under or even two divisions under what they've competed at in the amateurs, and then they'll build up their record, and then when their body can't take it because they're oftentimes somewhat young or in their 20s, then they'll move up. Like Shakur Stevenson, there's a picture of him next to Terrence Crawford, and Crawford's a welterweight, and Shakur Stevenson looks pretty big. You see what I'm saying? And he was just competing at featherweight. So it was destined that he would have to move up. Same thing with Lomachenko. Lomachenko had already fought at 131 plus pounds in the amateurs, but he didn't start his career there. He started his career as, as a featherweight and he was bigger, way bigger than a lot of his opponents. So for people like Josh Taylor, who keeps saying Lomachenko is tiny and using that as an excuse why Teofimo lost, that's I'm not accepting that either. Now, I do agree with Josh Taylor, the rest of what he was saying um, with the whole undisputed, right? The fact that Josh Taylor is saying what I've been told you, Ego Stradamus strikes again. I've said it. The WBC can say whatever they want. Mauricio Suleiman and Tio Fimo and his dad, they can say whatever they want. But per the dictionaries, definition of the word undisputed undisputed adjective not disputed or called in question accepted synonyms undoubted uncontested unquestioned and unchallenged so by the very definition of the word undisputed you know Teofimo his dad Mauricio Suleiman they need to have a better grasp of the English language and word that they are saying because as I just mentioned by definition you can't say you're undisputed and it is not undoubted it is not uncontested it is not unchallenged it is not unquestioned so by the very definition of the word undisputed this doesn't fit teofimo teofimo saying this 
you know, without question, I'm undisputed because this is what the WBC decided to do the franchise champion. But you have Boxing Ego, you have Ego, Josh Taylor, fans, they're all disputing it because we know the politics that took place that allowed for Lomachenko, who had the WBC belt, he beat Luke Campbell fair and square, cool, but he was supposed to have to fight a black American fighter in Devin Haney. His team petitioned to create uh, a way out in the witness protection belt, and therefore he didn't see Devin Haney. So Josh Taylor is telling you what I've been telling you. You are not undisputed because there is a dispute. This is not um, something that is not contested. It is very well contested. Ask Devin Haney if he feels that Teofimo is undisputed. So it's, and the thing is, it's not like Devin Haney has no leg to stand on. Like, it's not like just um, you go to Skid Row and, and ask somebody and they give you a, um, an insane response. This is a person who is a WBC champion. Listen, the WBC created this calamity and they created this collusion and confusion for fans, but it doesn't change the fact that we can't look at you as undisputed when there's a direct dispute with Devin Haney until you see Devin Haney. So I agree with Josh Taylor. Teofimo, if he moves up, because he said his goal is to fight the winner of Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez to be undisputed in two, di two divisions. It's not going to be really remembered as that because if even if people try to force this narrative, like I've seen ESPN and top rank telecast, they keep calling them undisputed. The real recognize real and there's always going to be an asterisk by it. You know, it's just like the the black bottle Panama Lewis scandal. There's always going to be an asterisk next to what was in that bottle. So Teofimo, you know, he could call himself undisputed, but until he fights Devin Haney or Devin Haney loses or something, then it's it's always going to be contested that you are not truly undisputed until this is resolved. Because as it sits, Lomachenko should have fought Devin. He didn't. And Devin remains with the belt. So until those situations change, you know, people are always going to remember that. So that that's that's what we've seen throughout history is when they can't beat you, especially for black Americans, um, they'll like circumvent you or try to create a way around it. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if you guys know the history, this is U.S. history, Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was a collective of black owned businesses and it started to become an industry and there was a lot of money. They burned it down. You see what I'm saying? They burned it down. You look up the black murderers row in boxing. These were a group of black fighters who other champions, oftentimes like a Caucasian champion, they refused to fight these group of guys that were black. And then they had to fight each other and knock each other off. And then, you know, maybe someone would fight them after they've been through wars with the other guys. You know, these are th these are things that we've seen throughout history. This is not just ego making up stuff as I go. This is throughout history. So it's like um, Black Wall Street, they created an economy and it was lucrative and self-sufficient and self-serving. And as a result, they burned it down. You know, they burned it down. They didn't like it. They burned it down. So it's like Canelo Alvarez was supposed to fight Jamal Charlo. Instead of fighting that black American fighter from Houston, they created another title and made him exempt and said, hey, you don't have to fight him. So even though we haven't gotten to see if, if Canelo can absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, beat Jamal Charlo, fans can say, oh, Canelo will whoop Jamal Charlo, but he hasn't actually whooped him. So it's all hyperbole and speculation same thing with Lomachenko some people will say oh Lomachenko would would destroy Devin Haney but we don't know because he was not even afforded the opportunity to even get the fight much much like uh the Jamal Charlo situation and we do know Teofimo did beat for the second time Lomachenko so it's not out of the question it shows Lomachenko can be beat. He's lost twice and he don't even have 20 fights. So it shows you he can be beat. So had Devin Haney been given the opportunity, who knows what he could produce? You can't just rob him of that and say there's no way he could beat Lomachenko and Lomachenko is losing to guys like Salido. Salido, if you look up his history, he lost his pro debut. He got knocked out. 
You know what I'm saying? So a decorated amateur and somebody who's bigger and skilled like Devin Haney, who's to say that he don't look worse than the Teofimo fight or Salido fight? You can't do that, you know, until they fight. So Josh Taylor is actually accurate here. And we will never know until the new franchise champion who's calling himself undisputed Teofimo fights him. You can fight Camboso and move up and move out of the division. But until you see Devin, it's always going to be that asterisk. That's how I feel. And I think that's a fair, like, fair, justifiable thought process. You, you know, you can't just, you have an obligation. And then as a result, you don't like, okay, here's an example. I'm the king of analogies. So if I have a credit card, let's say a Macy's credit card, and I run up the credit card and max it out, I owe, I have a, I have a, an agreement with this credit lender, Macy's and the bank that they use to pay back the money that I charged up. So let's say, we'll just keep it simple. Let's say the, the credit limit, the credit limit was $500. I run it up and I owe $500. I don't have $500 to pay them back. I can't just open up another credit card and start fresh and get a target credit card and think that I all of a sudden don't have to pay the Macy's balance back because it's a whole different bank and a whole different credit card. That's not how it works. If you accrued the $500 Macy's balance and you maxed out that credit card, just because you open up another credit card doesn't alleviate you from having to pay back the credit card A, the Macy's card, because you open credit card B, the Target card, you know? And that's, in essence, what we've seen in boxing. Just because the WBC, they had certain rules, and they said Jamal Charlo is the mandatory, he should get to fight Triple G or Canelo. Just because you create a new position doesn't erase it. For, this is not men in black, where they wave a pin and you forget everything. Just because Lomachenko became a franchise champion, it does not change the message from the fans' mind, hey, you were supposed to fight Devin Haney and you didn't. So just like the credit card shifting from credit card A to credit card B, you are not removed of your duties. You can run up and try to, you know, they gave you a different balance with the target credit card. So you could try to run that up and max that up. But you're still at some point liable for you're going to be in collections or something. And you're still responsible and liable for the money that you ran up with the initial credit card, the Macy's credit card. So we're not letting Lomachenko and Canelo off the hook because you created a way out for them and another franchise title another unnecessary title and for whatever reason the wbc thought that was going to be enough but the fans these these days are a lot smarter and you know they're not falling for that drop your thoughts in the comment section also use my link to get to buddy great way to get views and optimize your content also espn ufc 261 we'll be talking about this more but i had to go off we unpacked are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel.